Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is the first in a series of webinars that Teresa and I will be doing. I'm Sherry. I'm located in the Chicagoland area, and I work with the um, Highland Park Truck Store and also the Zion Cycle Ray. Hi, Teresa. And Hi, and I'm Teresa. I'm from New Jersey. Um, my full-time career is a cost analyst, but I work at the Truck Store Middletown as their ambassador. I am also own a women's team riptide cost cycling for 17 years, and I'm a personal coach. So I hear you're getting a lot of snow today, huh? Yes. Well, we're on that line between three inches or 18 inches. So I guess to wow. be determined. So you're going to be heading indoors and getting on your trainers. So that's the topic today. And we'll talk about how to get started doing indoor cycling. So I think let's start at the high end where um, let's talk about the different types of trainers. There, I'm sure everybody's heard of smart trainers, dumb trainers, wheel on versus direct drive. Um, so let's talk a little bit about it. Teresa, what kind of trainers do you have and recommend? So I, I did start using a, I have had smart trainers and I've had wheel on and wheel off. So right now I am using the Saris H2 trainer, which is a wheel off trainer, which I completely love. And that's called a direct drive because the wheel yeah, is correct. direct drive. Okay. And have you found any issues with um, trainers that have the wheel on? Um, not necessarily. I find that they're both like great options. They're just different price points with the wheel on trainers, um, which they, the only issue you will have there is the power accuracy is a little bit less for people that are into power. Um, you can have wheel slippage if it's not calibrated correctly. Um, but as far as a training device, you know, whatever's going to get you indoors will help because I did use a Compu trainer for years um, as my smart trainer before I moved over to the Saris H2 trainer. Okay. And I'm using a Wahoo kicker, um, direct drive, so the wheel's off. I do have experience with the Wahoo Core. Um, I kind of upgraded because I all the issues that you had commented about. Um, I don't like calibrating every time I have to ride. I like it once or twice a week or even once every two weeks, depending what I remember. Um, also, anybody who does use a wheel on, remember to put a trainer tire on. Otherwise, you're going to wear out a perfectly good outdoor um, tire. Have you had that experience too? Um, yeah, definitely. I noticed that with the wheel on trainer, especially if you're going to be training um, indoors throughout the winter, you're going to be replacing your tires more often. And it's not an even, um, it's not um, a cheap expense because, you know, as you know, our tires can be pricey as well. So I did notice that you do need to change your tires more often if you're not using like a specific trainer tire. Right. And never use a trainer tire outside. because Yes, you will slip. <laughs> yes. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about calibration? I know we yeah, did sure. another so webinar. What trainer you had depends on when you need to um, calibrate your trainer. So for instance, more of the wheel on trainers there, you have to actually calibrate them every ride. Um, the direct drive trainers, depending on what you have, I have an H2, so I do it like every month or so, but the tax Neo, you don't have to calibrate at all. It never needs calibration. So calibrations can be done using Zwift, but, or their, um, actual apps it comes with. So like Saris comes with the Rory app. So I prefer to use that one because there's less failing in the calibration. Why don't you talk a little bit about what it means to calibrate? Do I have to get off with some tools or do I just spin up to a certain speed? How, how does calibration work? Yeah, so um, it's really easy. So whatever app or if you're using Zwift to calibrate, it pretty much tells you to spin up to a certain speed, but then you need to continue spinning until it calibrates down. And once you hold that speed for like 25 seconds, I think every app's different, you'll stop spinning until it calibrates down. And what it's doing is it's making sure that it's actually more for an accurate power reading. And that's the whole reason why we're doing the calibration, just so people understand why do we calibrate um, our trainers, um, all the smart trainers, even if you're using a dumb trainer with um, a power, uh, power pedal, you're still gonna calibrate your pedals as well. It's the same thing. You're calibrating the power to have the most accurate reading during your ride. Great. So let's switch over to what software is available and what type of software I would use. Um, everybody, I think, has heard of Swift. Yes. Now that's one you use a lot. I do too. 
Um, there's Trainer Road, Roby, which you mentioned, Training Peaks, Suffer Fast. Um, let's talk a little bit about the different software, why you'd want one over another or use two types. Maybe if I have a coach and like you, you, you would send me a, um, a workout to download. How does that work? And then talk about erg mode versus erg auth. <laughs> so all the programs are amazing programs. It depends on what kind of rider you are. So if you like that social aspect, Zwift is like the perfect like training tool because you can ride with friends, meetups, uh, you can join events where Trainer Road and uh, Sufferfest is workout based. So you're not going to get that social aspect. But with, um, with Zwift, uh, it's just, um, with Zwift, I'm sorry, can you repeat what you want me to ask again? Well, like yes. you, you provide a lot of your clients work. Oh, yeah, the training downloads. Thank you, sorry, I was like yeah. wondering. Right. So as a coach, Training Peaks is a device that works alongside with Zwift. And I also with uh, Trainer Road. Uh, coaches will populate, um, the workouts and training peaks and actually create it in their, their plan. So it's like a drop down menu and training peak. So all you need to do is go into Zwift, go under workouts, see the training peak folder and your workouts right there. It's clicked. There's no downloading available. If you have coaches that don't use training peaks, they can still create their workouts and send it to you through an email. And then it's a little bit more difficult. You have to drag your, uh, the workout into a Zwift folder and then it shows up onto Zwift. Right, and Zwift also, if you don't have a coach, has different training workouts that you can do and download it. So you're not riding aimlessly through the virtual uh, countries or whatever yeah. you want. Know, world, um, yeah, and Zwift keeps upgrading their um, program where they actually have like training programs. So you have all your workout library and then you can download training programs for whatever specific area that you're working on throughout the winter or springtime. So. Um, similar to Trainer Road and Sufferfest without the social aspect of it. Yeah, and Sufferfest I've just been playing with because I'm going to be reviewing it for Road Bike Rider. And it's it's great because not only do you have the actual indoor riding, but now they've incorporated movies and you've got um, yoga, 15-minute block yoga sessions, which I actually did this morning. So it, it, every... Um, software package has something different and you have to see what's right for you. So let's talk a little bit about erg mode because people have had problems where they don't turn it off and then you're pedaling through mud. <laughs> so. so erg mode is, it's something that's talking to your smart trainer. So erg mode is to do with when you have a smart trainer versus a dumb trainer. So what I noticed with erg mode, it's preference if you like it or not. Like some people love it, some people don't. So what it I does- <laughs> I, I, I dislike it and I always tell my clients don't use it, especially if knee issues because you get into that death pedal where you can't like even move the pedal. So you're probably saying, what is she talking about? So what erg mode does, it talks to your trainer and it controls it. So you don't have to shift. So if you are prescribed to do 150 watts, erg mode will talk to the trainer and it will tighten for you. So you have to hold those that wattage. So you're, there's no shifting involved. It's just, you have to pedal. Um, but then sometimes you have that resistance that's tighten up and just kind of, I call it the death mode because you can barely pedal. Yeah. And then you have to stop pedaling, let the magnets release and then resume. So yeah, yeah I always turn it erg off. I didn't know I, that the first month <laughs> and I was on Swift and I was like pedaling through mud every time. Yeah. I always turn erg mode. And last night, I don't know what possessed me halfway through my 15 minute interval. I'm like, let me turn erg mode on. And then I was like, oh no, why don't I just do that? Because as you know, on Zwift, you can use your companion app to switch it on and off if you accidentally ever have it on, so. And that's a good segue over to um, our, our computer setup that you need to go into indoor riding and use some of these apps. So there's, you know, using just your smartphone, computer, do you use both? I know you use Apple TV, which I'm not familiar with. Um, and then let's touch upon Bluetooth versus Ant Plus. Okay. So what is, what is your setup? So as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see behind me. So that's my setup right there. So I use an Apple TV with the Harris uh, Saris uh, H2 trainer. 
And I did use Zwift and um, using a computer and I found there's a lot of dropouts. Um, I found that there's a lot of delay and wait time to get onto the program. I'm sure um, if you use a computer, you faced, you know, you have, you have um, had issues with that. So the Apple TV, I feel like it's instant. As soon as I turn it on, it goes right to the program. Um, the only thing is that little remote, I have to show you. This is the only thing I dislike about the Apple TV is using this remote. And there's times where I just wanna throw it out the window. Um, <laughs> other than that, it's awesome. Um, my iPhone does have the remote on here that I find it's a little bit easier to use, but I would say the only dislike about um, the Apple TV, which people probably watching this will be like, oh my gosh, I'm glad she said that because um, this remote is horrible. Like the, the touch is so sensitive and you're trying to get to your workout and you go up three, down three, up one to the point where you just want to just throw it. So, um, but my setup um, for the last two years has been the Apple TV. And as you can see, uh, I bought a cheap TV on Amazon and I have it just projecting on that. So you probably have what I have is a smart TV. So it doesn't have a, a tube in it. So you can get a huge screen for 250 bucks. Yeah. And then the Apple TV just is a USB port right into the back of TV. Okay. So yeah. it's a box and on its own. Yes. Yeah, okay. it's a little black box. Um, so the Apple TV is actually this little tiny, uh, see that little black box that says Apple yep. TV? That's what it is. And the wires just plug right into the back of the TV and then uh, for the power source. And then do you have to pay a monthly fee for that? No, it's just a one time, it's just a one time fee for the box. I believe it's about $140, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I've had it for two years. So, so it's like, once you have it, you have it. So. Okay. Very good. And can you use Apple TV, the app that's on your phone? Uh, yeah. So like on my, on my phone, I know. I have an iPhone with Apple TV, but I I've never used it. You wouldn't need to, because if you have an iPhone, you're, you're, you, it's already Bluetooth. So you would just go right into Zwift that way. Okay. Does that make sense versus like using the Apple TV? So this is just to project that onto the screen. But I'm curious about that. If you used Apple TV, could you project it onto your TV? Like I'll directly? have to play with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, now that you said that, I'm like, ooh, I'm wondering. But I do know that there's a remote on here that I do use on my phone that can act as the Apple TV remote. That's a little bit more user-friendly. Okay. So what I use is I have a laptop and my iPhone. So I start Zwift in the companion app, and then I, I um, start Zwift on my laptop, and I can project it onto my TV too. And I am able to use my cell phone to turn around in Zwift or wave to people yes. or message. Um, I've got something else we need to talk about is Discord. People. Um, have mentioned, you know, join us on Discord and chat with us. And how do you use Discord? So I used to use Discord a lot when I used to lead the Trek Swift ride. It's just a communication tool. It used to be a really big gaming device, like when gamers used to um, use it. So it, it's just like an app where people can, you give them a link. And when you're leading a ride, people all can just dial into it. And now you can have a voice uh, a voice conversation while you're riding or riding with friends instead of the text messaging that we do on Zwift or if you're using other apps that doesn't have that social ability it allows you to talk while you're riding. A lot of people use Discord with Zoom and uh, are teaching spin classes. Yep. So, I did it for my uh, trivia well, class. <laughs> sorry? I, I used it for my trivia. We On Friday nights we would do a ride on Zwift and then I'd ask trivia questions. That's awesome. It's yeah. a great way to, to talk to each other. And it's, it's a free app. It, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a free app and you can actually start different channels. So you can start a channel for just like writing or a channel for your women's group. Like I have a channel for my team, a channel yep. for my tech women's group and stuff like that. So it makes right. it easier for people to dial in um, or just, you know, click in and just start talking to you. All right, let's segue over to... Um, how do you stay cool on the bike? Because everybody knows in a spin class, you're just dying of heat and you're sweating. 
So what type of fan and cooling system do you use? So I actually just have two little, like they're little fans, but they're very powerful fan. I also train in the basement as, and it's a lot cooler because I have windows to open down here, like full size windows. But I feel like a cooling device is probably the most important thing for training because it can give you like false readings of your heart rate monitor if you're overheating and also not give you the ride that you need. So I think that you want a fan that's not going to be overpowering your music because we all know we either love our music or videos that we're watching. And we want a fan that's going to keep us cool enough that we're not overheating. So um, it doesn't matter what size of fan you have as long as it's producing the air that you need to stay cool. Right. And I use the Wahoo Headwind, which is really nice. First of all, it's quiet. Um, and that's something you want to think about, not only for your fan, but your trainer too. If your trainer is very loud, you're not going to be able to hear your music or, or your movie that you're watching. But the headwind's nice because it can um, work via Bluetooth. So it'll um, increase the speed of the fan either by your heart rate and you can control that um, variable of your heart rate. So I have it set at 80 is the low end and 160, it's going to blow you off the bike. <laughs> and, um, and you wear that fan and you find that it gives you just enough airflow. It's, that it's awesome. It's, it's small and I'll show the picture at the end of my setup. But basically you can also set it by speed, which I don't like because you're going slower up a hill and your heart rate's going to be higher and it's going to be less of a fan than when you're going you know, full out on a flat. So you need oh, that, That's awesome. I yeah, know. It, it's pretty cool. It's expensive, but to me it was well worth it because I'll stay down in the basement longer. I'm yeah, not no, definitely. I have two, one on the table, as you see back there, one on the floor, and they're both controlled by a little remote control. So I don't have to ever get off the bike to control the speed. Yep. So I can control the speed as like um, during my intervals if I want it a little bit more. And then when I'm cooling down, obviously I turn them down so I'm not freezing, but right. I- was interested in hearing someone who had that Wahoo fan. So I'm glad that you did. <laughs> I even did a review of it. All right, let's move on to clothing. Do you wear anything special? What do you usually wear on the bike? So obviously I always wear my bib shorts that I feel the most comfortable with because you're spending time indoors. So I feel like there's less movement around than when you're outside, like, you know, especially if you're not using like a rocker plate on your trainer. Um, and then I always start with a little bit of like a long sleeve jersey that I can take off because it always starts a lot cooler for me in the basement. And then I have just like a tank top on me. So I, it all really depends on the temperature, but I definitely always wear my bib shorts that are the most comfortable because I do find that riding indoors, I'm more set on the saddle than like moving around as I do outside. Yep. So I, I also wear bibs. I try and wear my summer version of all my bibs, nothing heavy. Um, I do start out with layers because I'm in the basement. Yeah, same. And usually by mid-ride, I'm down to my bibs and my sports bra. <laughs> That's it. Because yeah, no, it's so hot. I, I agree. That's exactly usually how I start. I usually have a long sleeve right on my handlebars, but I just brought it upstairs to wash last night. So um, I always have like an extra layer, especially for when you're cooling down, when you're sweaty in your sports bra, I immediately put my long sleeve on because I'm, you know, I don't want to get sick and that catch that little breeze. But yeah, so I always have a little towel and a long sleeve right next to my bike on every ride. Yeah. And then speaking of towels, so I know I keep a towel draped across my handlebars because I sweat. And then I know you can also buy a strap that goes from the seat post to your handlebars. I don't know what the term is, a sweat strap. Yeah, I don't know what it <laughs> is. A sweat. It kind of like, yeah, it's unique. Yeah. Because what they're finding is that people that ride a lot indoors and are sweating on their handlebars, they're seeing a lot of rust and decay, not only in um, the housings on your brakes, but also on all the bolts around your handlebar and on the stem. That's a really good point that you brought up, Sherry, just because running a team and stuff like that, I have seen that. And um, the erosion underneath the bar tape that you don't see, like you think that the towel is catching all the sweat and everything, but um, I've had, I've seen bars break due, due to the erosion of all the sweat underneath yep. there. So I always tell my riders, 
if you're riding indoors all winter long, get a new bar tape for the springtime when you get outside, get those bars checked, get your nuts checked, get all everything checked just to make sure nothing rusted that needs to be replaced. So that was a really good point that you brought up that yeah. many riders don't realize. And, and maintenance on your bike, you know, just because you're indoors doesn't mean you shouldn't lube your chain and clean it. Um, so make sure you check that too during the, the season. Um, let's move on quickly to food, water, nutrition. What do you usually have on the bike? So right next to my bike station, I always have a couple goos, chews, uh, honey, stinger, waffles, or whatever I use. Um, and then however many water bottles I need per, um, I usually have about a bottle an hour, if not a little bit more for indoors, because we're sweating a little bit more. Um, and then I just have everything right there in case I need it during my ride. So I always have water with some kind of uh, mix inside and some food and like goos and gels and stuff off to the side. So I usually put a little bucket next to my station. So that way I have it right there for me on rides. That was going to be my next question. Do you have a table or how do you access it? Or do you have scream for your husband to come bring you an extra bottle or yeah, I have done that too. Or I, steal, I steal his, like, because if you see, we have a double setup with a little table right there with all our uh -huh. stuff. So um, if I run out of uh, fuel or water, I usually just steal one of his because he always seems to have like four uh -huh. bottles versus my two. <laughs> yeah. For me, I, I have a table that my brother actually built me, and I'll, I'll show it in my picture of my setup. But um, it's actually at bike height, so you don't even have to bend over. Nice. The only thing is if you kind of miss when put, you put something down, you got to stop and get off the bike. I've lost my phone several times and almost fallen off my bike trying to catch it. <laughs> I've done that too, or my ear pod, like my little earbuds will like fly out of my ear if I'm like ha have those and I'm like, oh my gosh, now I have to get off my bike. And not so, so let me ask you, you know, what do you do on the bike? Do you music, movie, TV shows? What do you, what do, you do to pass the time? I'm definitely a music person and sometimes I'm Zwift. I will find myself not even listening to anything because I'm so entertained by like the friends I'm riding with, but I'm definitely more of a music person than a movie. I feel like with a movie, I'll lose my distraction, stop pedaling. So, um, cause I've tried that and then next yep. thing I know, wait, nope, I got to keep pedaling. I'm in the middle of a interval. So definitely a music person for me. Yeah. I'm more music. I do try watching some shows and stuff, but Again, I also get distracted and I don't keep the power level I'm supposed to. So, yeah. Great. Anything you want to add before I kind of show my setup real quick? I, I just want to add something really quickly. I know we talked a lot about smart trainers and dumb trainers. Uh, I just want to make sure that people know that they can still get the benefits of using these programs using a dumb trainer with like a speed sensor. So they don't need to go that expensive way. So that's all I want to just express that there are so many ways to enjoy indoors um just find what you can and go with it great so just real quickly i wanted to show you my home setup so starting in the upper left um i have towels and i usually have one draped across my handlebars i have a mat because i have a finished basement that's carpeting so i want to protect the floor um then i have that table that my brother built i usually have a laptop my phone nutrition bottle um, and anything else I might need a remote. I have a big TV. Again, we talked about it. You don't need an expensive one, the one without a tuner that's smart TV. You can control with your phone or with your laptop. On the floor, you see the Wahoo headwind. Um, the trainer I have is the Wahoo kicker. And I actually had, a, um, I bought, I got the axis, the Wahoo axis that goes underneath the trainer. You take out the old feet and you put this in and it actually rocks about five degrees. So what Teresa was talking about that, um, unless you have a rocker plate, you know, your, your seat is staying stable and not moving with you. And I find this access has really helped a lot. Um, an hour, hour and a half on the trainer is a lot. You're not getting on and off. Um, also something we didn't talk about is I have a surge protector. So everything that I have that's mechanical, I plug into a surge protector so that if um, something happens, like we have a storm, I don't blow out a $1,600 trainer. 
I assume you probably do that too. Oh, definitely. I mean, ours is all like tucked behind the TVs, but we definitely do too, especially with our, this storm coming in with the snow. It's supposed to be 50 mile an hour gust. So let's hope oh, that. Oh, lovely. Sounds just like Chicago's <laughs> winters. Well, I think we'll wrap it up. I hope the information we shared with you is helpful and you're willing to go inside and see what it's all about. If you're looking for a trainer, um, fans like a headwind, and just need some more information um, for the folks in the Chicagoland area, stop in at Truck Store of Highland Park or Zion Cycle and the staff can help you and Teresa. Yeah, and for those in the New Jersey area, um, I'm lucky that my shop owns four of them, Trek Store Middletown, Brielle Cycery, Asbury Park Cycery, um, and the Kids Store of Brielle Cycery. So any of those shops can actually help you get you set up as well. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank and uh, we'll stop the recording.